So my name is uh, Reda Moali. Uh, I'm 37 years old and uh, I used to run the Geneva branch of one of the leading stock market brokers in Europe. And today, as mentioned on Ted Flyer, I'm supposed to be, or I am, uh, an art and business entrepreneur. So what is an art and business entrepreneur? It sounds a bit esoteric to me. And to tell you frankly, it's the, the first time that I hear about it. But um, I found this example quite interesting because it shows that sometimes reality is so complex that uh, our language fails to uh, describe it uh, accurately. Indeed, 2,400 years ago, uh, Aristotle conceived uh, the categories which uh, place every kind of object of human apprehension under one of ten possible classes to which it's supposed to belong. So this intellectual tool has been very, very admired through uh, the centuries and is certainly relevant to, relevant to many sciences, but proves insufficient when it comes to a uh, human being. Can you really understand a man by trying to uh, pin him down to a category or a set of categories? In fact, such an approach is based on a static view of the human being. It assumes his or her persistence, but in so doing, it probably misses the transformations the becomings which shape the narrative that constitutes our lives. And ignoring the changing nature of a man and a woman can only lead sometimes to a superficial projection of simplistic images to, onto, onto other people and generate dramatic misunderstandings. Let's compare the following perspective, one which reduces the human being to a rational homo economicus, while the other uh, takes into account the unfathomable complexity of reality. So to highlight the first approach, I'd like to take the example of the big financial crisis which started in 2008. Um, this crisis clearly showed the limits of all the economic and financial models we trusted for the past 30 years. These were based on the idea of a rational homo economicus. This concept simply means that the mathematical equation used um, to describe and predict economic behavior is based on ideal people, probably like us, able to understand and use all the information uh, available, around, uh, available around them before acting. So this homo economicus just replaced things or people by figures, since everything for him is comparable. He should even be able probably to choose between his mother or his father, depending on which one maximizes profit. To him, reality is number, and everything else should be considered as illusion or maybe poetry in the best case. On the other hand, and more humbly, in 2004, Thomas Hirschhorn, a contemporary artist, produced a, gig a gigantic installation devoted to the thinking of Michel Foucault. It contained an impressive mass of uh, visual documents and information. One could watch or listen to all Michel Foucault's appearances on TV or radio. Hour after hour, from noon on Saturday to noon on Sunday, speaker after speaker took the floor in the lecture hall located in the middle of this setup. In such a context, our fam famous uh, Homo economicus quickly found himself in the presence of a chaotic, current of science that exceeded his capacity to master the space around him. Uh, Nicolas Bourriot, who curated the exhibitions, analyzed the work of uh, Thomas Hirschhorn as um, he thinks that this, um, if Thomas Hirschhorn has been met with such a widespread and immediate response, it is because his uh, compositional principles plays with saturation, which our epoch intuitively knows it embodies. I mentioned earlier that the approach by category misrepresented reality. In fact, it can even have strong performative effect on reality. For instance, democracy invoked as a, as a universal purpose in the wake of the 9-11 led the United States to wage a war against Iraq um, despite huge civil protest against it. In that context, the misunderstanding between Arab-speaking countries or Muslim countries and the West escalated. The clash of civilization theory became a self-fulfilling prophecy. And just to add to the uh, ambient confusion, 
Thomas Friedman was claiming that the world, the world was a global market as flat as a level playing field where historical and geographical divisions were becoming increasingly relevant. irrelevant. Uh, Sylvain Guggenheim, a French historian, released with the help of one of the biggest publishing houses a polemical book denying the Arab contribution to universal knowledge, to the preservation and passing on of the Greek uh, cultural heritage. The book fueled an already widespread and outrageous con conception of the Arab world as uh, an archaic space mainly characterized by oil and dictatorship. Our history is unfortunately full of uh, examples where populist ideas and gross simplification led to barbarity. It is only our capacity to remain awake that allows us to overcome uh, these kind of dramatic situations. Uh, I think that we should remember Albert Camus saying in 1957, each generation doubtless feels called upon to reform the world. Mine knows that it will not, the mind knows that it will not reform it, but its task is perhaps even greater. It consists in preventing the world from destroying itself. Today, what is called globalization sounds like a kind of modus operandi. In ordinary language, uh, the word modernizing has come to mean reducing cultural and social reality to Western formats. For the last 30 years, the global cultural landscape has been shaped on the one hand, by the pressure of the overproduction of object information, and on the other, by the rampant standardization of culture and languages. I need no need to linger about the fact that I'm obliged to, to speak in English today despite my uh, bad accent. <laughs> Aristotle, him again, enshrines happiness as the central purpose of human life and the goal in itself. My conviction is that we must indeed cling to, that, to this aim and never give it up. But if we are to achieve it, uh, we have to be fully aware that we cannot do so by ourselves. We have to be aware that our lives are dependent upon other lives. General and individual interests are closely related and uh, solidarity between people is not, in that case, an option. It is a necessity. The social link between us is not a given. It has to be recreated permanently. I can, uh, I can remember all these people uh, on TV talking about, uh, the analysts talking about this crisis and calling now for European solidarity between, uh, between uh, countries in the face of, uh, of, of the Greek crisis. So it's a bit uh, interesting to see now even that people are looking for more states and more solidarity. I am from uh, an ethnic minority. I'm a Muslim. Uh, I grew up in a poor area in the suburb of Paris. I was raised by uh, a single mother. Uh, most of the people uh, I, I grew up with are still living in that environment. And um, that could have been my, my destiny as well. Uh, if uh, all the statistics and the vertical mobility theory is to be trusted, for economic reasons that I won't get into here and now, uh, European countries have imported an important quantity of people from their ex-colonial territories. These people had different belief. They had different way of sleeping and eating. Uh, most of them came from rural areas and made huge efforts to adapt themselves to the Western way of life. Uh, the maternal trauma of such a move remained difficult to um, evaluate precisely. For example, despite 40 years spent in France, my mother never stopped telling stories about her childhood in Algeria, about the village she used to live in, and uh, which sounds like now the, how do you say that, um, the dream and irreachable Ithaca. <coughs> Dialectical miscegenation um, is a quite complex process of transplant, rejection, take over, negation of uh, what is considered as pure. Any synthesis remains fragile and must always be renewed. By breaking social categories of orthodoxy, miscegenation deconstructs the dominant order and forces to dynamically rethink the social tie, which lies at the basis of our democracies. 
democracy's legitimacy is, cannot only be based on the validation or continuation of an historical heritage or cultural tradition. Democracy's legitimacy can only come from the guarantee of an equal participation of all its citizens to the conversation. It has to allow for the possibility of disagreement between us. It is a dynamic process subject to incompletion and novelty because we are living in an open society permanently fed by new components, new conceptions, and new ideas. We are compelled to think and never stop thinking. The task is uh, not easy, I do agree, because events that uh, shape reality are heterogeneous and often lie in small interstices between fourth and sensorial experience. Who could have imagined, for example, that um, the confiscation of a small street vendor wares in a small town in Tunisia could uh, no cover several regimes one after another? Artists, 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 art, I think that artists can help us in this task. With their ever-moving minds, they can help us get a grip on the world's transformations. Being sensorial thinkers, always questioning. Many of them have already understood the stakes and fully integrated them in their own practices. I can remember uh, Suzanne Sontag, the American writer, saying, art today is a new kind of instrument, an instrument for modifying consciousness and organizing new modes of sensibility. Artists have had to become self-conscious aestheticians, continually challenging their means, their materials, and their methods. I truly believe, indeed, that art and culture can help us to reinvent ourselves, and why not, and why not invent a new people? This conviction was so strong that it pushed me two years ago to uh, give up my banking career in order to meet artists and intellectuals and to think about the possible answers we could give together with uh, our skills. We had no precise model at all but we had strong values. And we mixed our potentialities and managed to create a new reality. Of course, we had to get away from cliché and ready-made thought. And far from the romantic conception of the artist who refused the world, I must say that I found free and committed people and very involved and interested by the common good. One of the answers that we gave was to build, in what is sometimes called the periphery, a multidisciplinary platform where people can meet and learn from each other. Totally open and deterritorialized, Dar al Memun is a cultural center in the Moroccan countryside, hosting an artist residency in visual arts, a research center in literary translation, a library, and a wealth of educational activities for both school children and adult. We deliberately choose the name of the Caliph al-Mamun, who in the 9th century Baghdad founded the House of Wisdom as the fountainhead of scholarship. There, Arabic translators working on Plato, Archimede, on Euclid, preserved much Greek learning. There, scholars and scientists of various ethnicities and religions gathered and freely exchanged ideas. In the same way, at Dal Mamun, we want to make way for a new and fruitful encounters between artists and translators and audiences of all types. First world and third world, rural and urban, eastern and western, local and international. Translation is for us a necessity. It is a political act because it involves a genuine drive to understand the other. It is the opposite of projection. You have to dig deep into the meaning and structures of a text in order to be able to recreate them in your own language. Translation is anti-imperialistic in a sense since it aims at welcoming the other into your own cultural territory. We set up a um, translation program which goes both ways. Translation into Arabic of essential Western texts in the social sciences in order to help break a new ground in Arabic scholarship. 
and translation into European languages, languages in, of important but unfortunately little known classical and modern Arab texts in order to bring about a more complete and nuanced view of the Arabic world. This translation project involved establishing an ambitious residency program for translators from different countries, as well as partnership with the publishers and universities around the world. Fully aware of um, economic difficulties artists can have, and fully aware as well of uh, their important role in uh, our society, we created an artist residency in visual arts with the following purposes. First, promote the emerging scene and help to professionalize it. Two, support the mobility of artists and artworks. Three, uh, foster local emulation by uh, hosting international artists. We are also currently creating um, a cross-residency programs uh, in order to send Dar al Mamun artists in residence in two partner organizations abroad. For instance, Mamadou Atier, a young Senegalese artist who participated in our first session of residency at the end of 2010, realized that he needed to improve his school curriculum after spending time in contact with Egyptian and American artists at Dar al Mamun. This experience uh, led us to promptly set up a sustainable program dedicated to young African artists in partnership with the renowned French art school. Mamadou uh, will be the first recipient of the program. We also wanted to be fully involved in our local environment and promote accessibility of our cultural activities to local people. It was important for us uh, not to erect a sort, uh, a some, uh, a sort of uh, ivory tower in the middle of the Moroccan countryside. Therefore, uh, we have established a partnership with um, the Moroccan Foundation Zakoua Education, which has been fighting now for over 15 years against illiteracy in Morocco, and with the French NGO Libra Libra Library Without uh, Borders, who have been making books accessible to communities around the world. With them, we have started a literacy program, a kindergarten program, reading and writing workshop a kind of window into other worlds for kids with uh, few prospects. So as you can imagine, such a program exceeds my uh, own financial capacity. <laughs> and it has to rely on a um, strong economic strategy. Our strategy uh, mainly relied on our belief that culture should be included in the economic cycle and that it can produce economic efficiency without giving up on our high standards. I think that culture is based on the meeting with uh, a kind of elsewhere, embodied by people or ideas. Uh, I can remember the funny situation where uh, several artists coming from big European cities uh, wonder, were wondering how they could stay around in the Marrakesh countryside after their residencies uh, were over. So in order to share this experience um, and make it econo economically durable, we decided to create an hotel based on our values. We called it Fillah, which means peasant in Arab, as a tribute to the present farmers around Dar al-Mamun. Peasants and caliph sharing an environment and living together in a, in a complementary and fruitful relationship. What a beautiful dream. Um, we didn't know anything about hotels, but uh, we decided to invent one according to our own definition of happiness. And I must say that up to now, uh, I've never been disappointed by, by this kind of method. Secondly, provided the growing scope of uh, Dar al Mamun, we had to create a foundation as well in order to fundraise and finance a bigger building to host our ambitious cultural program. So um, the recent crisis forces us to rethink the usual models through, an open and through open and dynamic approaches. For both experiences, from both experiences that I had uh, first in, the, in banking and Adal al Mamoun, uh, I'm confident that the meeting of artistic and economic, despite their apparent heterogeneousness, 
can produce highly virtuous effect in a, an extremely changing environment where the main quality is uh, adaptation. Artists give us the tool to think new alternatives. I consider that the real uh, source of wealth comes from the creative power when, of people when they come together and co-produce, fully acknowledging and use their differences. Nevertheless, this fruitful coexistence is only possible when some ethical requirements are filled. Human freedom is realized in the adoption of humanity as an end in itself. For the one thing that no one can be compelled to do by another is to adopt a particular end. Thank you for your patience.